Hey guys, it's Herc. Going to be breaking down this five-game NBA slate here in DraftKings, going game by game, giving a breakdown of my favorite plays, some pivot plays, my core plays at the end, as well as the lineup process and lineup build uh, based on the news we have so far. So if you guys are new to the channel, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the video. A little lineup review from uh, last night. I was able to cash, nothing too crazy there, double up my money. Unfortunately, Jamal Murray and Jokic were god-awful. It was a 20-point blowout from the first quarter, so... They got absolutely no second half run there. Uh, Jamal Murray was 12% owned, which is you know frustrating because if those two would have had their average games, really could have competed for first place because first place was only at what 308 in this tournament. So yeah, I mean four or you know average games from Jokic, average average games from Jamal Murray would have really helped me out there. The rest of my lineup was pretty decent, solid. So you know can't complain about cashing. Looking to continue that into tonight. And a lot of those plays were from the potential lineup build from last night or from yesterday's video. So they did carry over into the night. Obviously, news changes everything, so keep that in mind. But let's build a lineup for today's five-game slate. There's a lot of uh, core plays that really stand out. are going to be super chalky, but are just really, really solid plays. So getting into this first game here with Toronto and Cleveland, um, kind of an ugly game here. Don't really love it, but there are some pieces we can look to for a GPP lineup. Uh, starting off, Pascal Siakam. I think he makes for a very solid contrarian spin-up play. Uh, he's been decent recently. Uh, a couple of big games, 64 uh, and 57 most recently. Big news is Fred Van Fleet. If he's out, it just raises the floor of all the other starters. If he's back, uh, no one really stands out to me besides maybe Podol. I mean, he's been playing very, very solid the past two games. And he started the past two games. So I think he's really just to stand out for me. But if Fred Van Fleet's out, uh, it just raises the interest in Pascal. They're all pretty much secondary plays right now for me, but there's a good amount of interest in Pascal as like a contrarian GPP option. Uh, Scotty Barnes would probably start at point guard. Uh, it's just hit or miss with him. It's either he's going to go out there, play 40 minutes, get you like 45 fantasy points, or he's going to go out there and get you 28 fantasy points. You, you really don't know what you're getting with him. And the 8,000, it's super, super risky, but if there's no Fred Van Fleet, he should be playing point guard and he should be able to, you know, hopefully get you there if you want to play him. So I don't mind him. It's just I don't love the price tag with how kind of up and down he's been. Poto, as I said, is probably my favorite play at 6,200. He's been seen close to 30 minutes. Uh, he's been aggressive shooting the ball. He's been an absolute beast at rebounding. Can he get those peripheral stats as well as like the assists, blocks, and steals? So I think Poto looks really solid. Gary Trent Jr. is a, a decent option who's been coming off the bench. He's been super aggressive shooting the ball a ton. Obviously, if Fred Finley leads back, it will take some usage away from a guy like Gary Trent. But he's been, you know, he's solid there at 5,900. I do have a good amount of interest in OG uh, coming off some pretty bad games. 32 minutes um, was decent, 27 and a half, and then 39 minutes uh, was terrible, only 16.25 fancy points. So I'd like him to kind of get back in this a swing of things, flow of things after coming back from the injury. He was actually close to 33 fancy points per game uh, before then. So I think he looks solid there at 5,700. And then these secondary guys like Precious, Boucher, sure you can land on them. They're, they're decent GPP options, but... If they're price tags, they're nothing more than like a dart throw. So nothing like too crazy from this like first game on the opposite side. Mitchell's there. Garland's there. Don't mind them. Prefer Garland just because the price tag difference. Mobley's fine. Allen, price. I mean, all they're, they're all kind of priced up about right. So nothing really stands out. Uh, Karis Levert is a little bit interesting here. The minutes were down last game, which interesting. Not really sure why. Uh, but he should see mid-20s, maybe into the 30s, depending on how he's doing. So I think he makes for... A solid GPP play. There is still some risk with him. Same thing with Rubio. I should see anywhere from like 15 to 20-ish minutes. Uh, he's a, a decent dart throw play on this slate. Uh, you can always look to Seti. Same thing. Kind of a dart throw play there. So not a lot of interest in that first game. Now moving on to a game I do have a good amount of interest in. So bonus looks great. Fox looks great. And then once you get to these wings, as I always say, uh, with these four wings of Herder, Monk, Barnes, and Murray. Obviously Herder, Barnes, and Murray start. Monk comes off the bench, and whoever does the worst out of those wings, which has usually been Kevin Herter, uh, usually gets benched for Monk. Uh, as we saw last game, only played 22 minutes. That game went into two two overtimes, and Monk was obviously fantastic. 58 and a half fancy points. We know he's huge upside, so if you think he's hot and going to stay hot, I don't mind getting in there. Uh, it's 5,000 against OKC. It's just one of those things, you know, in a normal game, sees anywhere between like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe on the low end, 15 minutes, just depending on how he's doing. So there's a lot of a lot of risk there with these wings, but there's a lot of GPP upside with them. So that's kind of my take there. Nothing real like stand out to me. Um, 
but I think there's a lot of good pieces from that Sacramento side. Now for the OKC side, we're obviously going to want to start off with Josh Kitty. He has all the usage in this team in this lineup. Uh, the downside is he will randomly get benched, only play 24 minutes in a super close game against Phoenix. 3 of 14, he's been shooting the ball horrendous recently, so it's tough. It's, it's annoying how bad he's been playing, especially in the last eight against Phoenix. 18% ownership, and he's only going to go for 19 and a half, really? So yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you, you got to lock Josh Giddy in. Great matchup here against San, Sacramento. Game should be a better game environment than it was versus Phoenix, and they kept that Phoenix game close. So if they're going to keep it close, I expect Josh Giddy to do very, very well here. Going to be super chalky, but I, I think you need to lock him into your lineups for tonight. So I think Josh Giddy's obvious, obvious core play, but he's going to be leading our potential lineup here. And I do like Jalen Williams a good amount as well. A guy who saw only 28 minutes, not really sure what they're doing with the rotations, but he was super productive when he's out there. Going to have a usage bump as well without SGA in. So I really like rolling with these two. They should lead the team in, in terms of like the ball handling, getting assists, points, all that good stuff. So I do like both of them at their price tags with no SGA once again. And I won't mind going for the, the triple dip here with uh, Lou Dort. Played 36 minutes. He was super aggressive. 36 and a half fancy points. I mean, he's going to be out there going to and Fox. So he should be involved, should look to take a bunch of shots. Now, I don't expect, you know, back-to-back -back three double-doubles in a row from him. But, I mean, he does have the upside when it comes to points. Obviously, he's shooting the ball a ton. Can get some blocks and steals. So, I think he looks very solid there at 4,600. Another guy who should be super, super um, chalky in the slate. And in terms of the, the secondary options, sure, you can get to, get to Isaiah Joe. I think he started, and obviously, he was the best player in terms of shooting on the Thunder uh, last game. If you want to ride the hot streak there, sure. If he starts again, I think he makes for obviously a very solid play at 3,900. But it, it comes down to ownership. He's very score independent, so there is that risk that he goes out there, only plays 15 to 20 minutes, and really burns you. So that's the risk with him. You also got to factor in the chalk, but he makes for a very solid play. And I don't mind getting to these value pieces of like a Kenrich Williams, Jalen Williams. Uh, they've been doing fine. Sarge, that's an absolute dart throw. But yeah, I mean, you can dip down to a Joe Williams and Williams. Um, it's just they're, they're pretty risky when it comes to the minutes. Moving on to Minnesota and Golden State. Anthony Edwards is a guy you just want to lock in. Uh, fantastic matchup here, 9,500. As you can see, the minutes are there, usage is there, everything's there. Just really needed him to hit his shots, and he should easily pay off his price tag. In terms of the rest of the, rest of the team, I don't mind Rudy Gobert. Now, obviously, Golden State plays pretty small, so maybe this is a game where Rudy Gobert kind of struggles. We'll have to wait and see, but I think it makes for a solid contrarian uh, spin up there at 7,700. In terms of the rest of the team, Mike Conley's okay, 5,800. I prefer getting to Kyle Anderson, that guy who should see close to 30 minutes, has huge upside in tournament settings. I think this is a game environment where he could definitely thrive. So I do like Kyle Anderson a good amount at 5,400. In terms of the rest of the team, um, you know, McDaniels, you can land on him. He's fine. Reed, he's always a, a dart throw GPP play. I mean, 18 minutes, 33 and a half fancy points. So kind of ceiling there. But yeah, I mean, you really need a guy like Gobert to struggle, get in foul trouble, or you know, Golden State just runs small, so they throw a read in. So you could have to go that route tonight. Don't mind it. And that's really it. No real interest in any of the other guys. Moving on to Golden State. Jordan Poole, really, really like him in today's matchup versus the Timberwolves. Not a lot of good defenders on the Timberwolves side, so I think Jordan Poole should be able to feast. Same thing with Clay Thompson. So I think they both look like very, very solid plays there. Draymond Green is questionable. If he's out, they're probably going to start Poole, Thompson, DiVincenzo, Looney, and Kaminga. And Looney and Camingo would be great plays there. I mean, especially Camingo, his price tag 4400 should be pretty involved there. Um, but yeah, good amount of interest in this Golden State side. And I will mention Ty Jerome. He's been playing a good amount of minutes. It, it helps if Draymond's out. He should see at least 20. So he's a very solid value play, 3600 And then Jermichael Green, I think he would make for a, a decent GPP play. Flat minimum price tag with no, uh, if there's no Draymond Green, he should see close to 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Uh, he's a guy who can easily catch fire, get hot from the floor. So I do like him a good amount, and they will probably throw in Anthony Lamb as well. So there's a good amount of value on the Golden State side that opens up if Draymond Green's out. So make sure to stay updated with that because we're, we're going to want at least a few pieces uh, from this side if we'll get, if Draymond gets ruled out. So right now, just going to put in pool, but stay updated because we could switch things around for a guy like DiVincenzo, get to Camino, all that good stuff. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with Draymond. Moving on to the last few games here. Uh, we have the Houston side, which obviously, once again, KPJ is out, Jalen Green's out. So we're going to want to load up for uh, Sengun there at his price tag. Obviously, we can't fit everyone in right now. 
so we'll take them out in a minute. But yeah, I mean, Sengun's going to lead this team in terms of usage uh, when it comes to assists, rebounding, scoring. So I really love his upside. His massive, massive upside, as we can see, uh, 50 bomb there. And then before, he's going to have a great stretch, you know, 62, 57, 54, 70. Um, so yeah, he's massive, massive ceiling. Should lead this team in the usage. Really like him. And I do like, you know, KJ Martin a good amount. If Tate starts, he looks very solid at 4,200. Eason is worth a look off the bench. And then Josh Christopher, uh, or excuse me, Ty Ty Washington did start. He actually did decent. Uh, his best game of the season starting. So you could take a shot on him. Don't love it. I think there's better plays at their price tags, even if he does start again. So right now, I guess... I'm going to take out Jalen Williams to open things up. We'll just leave it like that for now. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the Houston side. And then the Portland side, obviously, Dame looks like a fantastic spin-up option. Grant looks great in, the, in that 7K range. Those two should lead the teams in terms of offensive usage. Eubanks and Wofford can split the center minutes. They look fine. And then the, the guys on the wings, small forwards, reddish, little, sharp, thigh ball. I think they all look okay. Their price tags are okay. You know, there's one of them should be the third option. Uh, you really don't know who it is. So they're just more of like solid secondary options for me. Not a single one of them stands out as of right now until we get the starting lineup news. Then you could definitely go to them. But <clears throat> moving on to this last game here, Quad Leonard, 9,300, Paul George, and Russ. I think they all look pretty solid here. Um, I think the most interesting is probably going to be Kawhi. I mean, he's the alpha right now. And he's been the alpha all season in terms of the, he's going to get his. I mean, Paul George has said that in multiple interviews. You know, Kawhi Leonard is the number one. So I don't think, you know, with the addition of Russell, that playmaking, it does take some uh, of a bump from Paul George. And so for that reason, I think Kawhi is the safest. Just because, you know, Russ is not going to affect Kawhi getting his. He does affect Paul George getting his in terms of like, the playmaking that Paul George usually does. So for that reason, I like Kawhi the best. But I think Paul George and Russ look very solid as well. Powell is always a decent GPP option off the bench. Uh, super score independent, but he does have a ceiling there if he's hitting his shots. Uh, I think Plumlee's going to start once again. He did not close in that, that Sacramento game, uh, so he lost a ton of minutes there. But in a normal type game, I think he should see anywhere from 25 to 30, maybe even a little bit more if they don't go small, which Denver obviously have Jokic. So I think it's pretty safe to say uh, we can throw in Plumlee there and feel good about it at 5,100. Um, let's see if we can get... Josh Giddy back here in this lineup. Real fast for you guys. We'll work out the, the salary details in a second here. But then the rest of the team here, uh, Terrence Mann should see close to mid-20s you know, mid minutes. He looks okay. Uh, I just don't feel great about any of these value plays. Would rather they just stick with the top three guys and then maybe taking a shot on Powell. And I think, um, you know, Plummy once again looks really, really solid at that price tag. And then moving on to Denver. Uh, obviously coming off a terrible game last night. They should look to bounce back here against the Clippers. So I do really like Jokic once again as a, a solid spin-up play. I think Murray's going to be super uh, low-owned, contrarian. We know it's a huge ceiling. Uh, they just got off to a terrible start last night. So I like running back with those guys. We'll have to wait and see kind of how the injury news shapes up. If Aaron Gordon's back, um, it does kind of lower the interest in a Jamal Murray and Jokic for me. Uh, they just be, you know, very contrarian plays. Uh, but they still have very solid upside, even with Aaron Gordon back. Um, yeah, and if Aaron Gordon's back, it really takes out the interest in guys like MPJ, Bruce Bowen. I mean, KCP's still a fine play in that price range. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Absolute dart throw. Jeff Green, who's been seeing decent minutes uh, and been productive. But yeah, right now, it's just kind of that dependent on the Aaron Gordon news. Uh, so in terms of filling out this rest of this lineup, obviously... With some injury news, this could all change, so make sure to stay updated with me, with me on Twitter and on my free Patreon, which I'll have a write-up for tonight's slate uh, on that. coming out in probably an hour or two. Um, but yeah, let's finish out this potential build. Right now, um, let's see here. Who are we going to... I think right now, I think it's going to be Lou Dort. We're going to take Lou Dort out for right now, 3,200, so not a ton left over. Let's see who we can get to at the small forward spot. Let's go to Golden State real fast. Oh, Jeff Green. That's tough that he's 3,200 or that he's only a center play. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can force anyone here. Otherwise, we're going to have to change some stuff around. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
I mean, we could go to SETI here and then Jeff Green. I don't feel great about that. Or we could go to Anthony Landlayer and SETI, which I think would be decent, not the best. I, I think I do prefer, uh, you know, paying down for someone else, maybe a guy like Kyle Anderson taking him out, being able to pay up a little bit more at the small forward, power forward position. But I mean, this is not bad for right now. Obviously, we're, we're building around the fact that. Draymond definitely gets ruled out. Then the guy like Anthony Lamb would see, you know, 20 plus minutes. Uh, he could be productive when he's out there. We obviously get Jordan Poole in a great matchup. Anthony Edwards in a great matchup. Sadie's actually been seeing some decent minutes recently, 27-16. We know his upside if he gets hot off the bench. So, I mean, this is a, more of a, like a punt play uh, lineup. So, yeah, make sure to stay updated with me on Twitter. We'll have an updated one out uh, with core plays, all that good stuff later today. So, make sure to hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.